and good morning. Just about set up today. Almost, yep. I got my phone. Had a fun little standoff with a bear last night. Morning, Zenicon. Maddie live. I am trying to get this. There it goes. Sorry, I was in the middle of that. Yeah, um, <laughs> that's, how you, that's how you like begin and end a cliffhanger. <laughs> a little standoff with the bear last night, and that's it. <laughs> We've got a fruit tree, and the uh, I don't know. It had to be like a year and a half old, years old. It, it did not appear young enough to still with mom but it was on that borderline where you're looking for mom you're like okay this is not the smallest bear i've seen but hmm i'm gonna keep an eye out for mom in case this one's uh living in the basement for a long time you know Maybe this one just hangs out Dog ended up freeing it. Freeing something, right? Don't know what it is. So you walk outside, you're like, ah, oh, look, a bear. I'm like, okay, well, I'm gonna go back inside. <laughs> so, call the dog back, and and uh, you know, it keeps going towards the fruit tree. Okay, no, I, w I want those. I want you go the other way. Um, Dog finally chased the bear off. Oh yeah, all sorts of fun. But it's not often you get like 15 feet from a bear and you're like, oh, you're pretty, you're fluffy. You don't look all that upset. What's I going with? I'll see a blunder. Yep. I'm just gonna hang out. I'm gonna see if this, if I can get through this course. Hopefully, my net connection is not going to be all, all wonky today. Although I think I might. It is a little wet out today, and I, I know that my internet gets a little sensitive to moisture in the air. So, who knows? Yeah, the tutorial is talking about EV versus cycles, right? Cycles takes forever and EV is quick and you have to configure it, right? To get better results. But that comes with the cost of, of render time, right? Trying to get my headset on right. So, was, what, what was the last time you guys saw a bear? I 
I think that brings the count for me up to two in the area. Well, I didn't see the first one. I know it was a bear, though. It was close, and I know that this one wasn't the same as that one. Never! Oh. Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm talking like you could smell it. Actually, this bear, I didn't smell this bear. Sometimes they get into, like, trash or whatnot, and you can smell them. This, this one didn't smell. <laughs> You've never gotten that close to a bear. <laughs> you don't sniff to bears. <laughs> Denmark is the country of boredom. When I lived in the UK, it was kind of like... Actually, it was kind of like that, right? Um, you can say they do have certain types of animals out there. Fox... I don't, I don't know if they had coyotes or whatnot. Um. But I love that the... Uh... Hmm. Sorry, interesting part in the uh, tutorial. Um, hey, morning, Mega. How you doing? Now we're just kind of chatting. We're talking about setting up the graphics card on, on Max. Yeah, I'm doing well. Doing well. We're talking about the last time, last time we'd seen a bear. We had one here last night. You know, I'm gonna see if I can get this set up with the, uh, the external monitor. I think I can. Let me see. Where did that, where did that cable go? I'll have to do this later. I think I need like two two adapters and I don't don't remember where they went. So I'll have to dig through the box of 
the box of wonder. Because you always wonder where that thing is when you're digging through that box. Hmm. Alright, back to it. Alright, they talked about dedicated graphics cards and Macs and stuff, and oh, if you're on, uh, on a system like I am, you're not going to be able to use it. That's fine. Yeah, they're talking about dedicated graphics card. I don't, I don't care. Yeah, let's go to the next section. Lighting, cycles versus EV. Ooh. Talking about like an emissive surface. Hmm. Let's just toss something else in there. Let's see, where, where did the rest of them go? There we go, we got this. Oh. Is that guy? I'm going to turn off the light in the scene. Set it to zero, it'll just go forever, won't it? Yeah. All right, going to surface.
Wow. Okay. That that is interesting. Just being able to change how many um how many samples it does. It seems like four is just fine for this. It's still pretty specular, but it's alright. Material, add to the cone. Oof, there we go. I wonder how we control the wattage of the emission, the emissive value here. Settings. It's kind of cool. It's just I just have to find the, the, the node editor again. Um. Where is the node editor? Lost it. I thought it had been one of these buttons at the top here. Go layer. Oh, it was down here, right? Like, uh... Come on. Like if we just change this to, to the node editor. Is that shift F3? Interesting. <laughs> but you forgot all of the shortcuts. I don't think it's... Oh, it is the shader editor.
Uh, now they're talking about screen space reflections and cycles versus EV. All right. How do I do this? Let's see. So we have nodes here. Select. Add. Light output shader. Oh, let's play. So it looks like we can plug in something here. Don't know what it's going to be though. Mission. That's a green node. I don't think I can go to that. Morning, a stone cold man. How do I say motivated and energetic to work on my stuff like streaming and building this game as well as manage to do my full time job? Um, asking because you're having a hard time. And good morning. Yes. Um, well, that's your, that's a fantastic question. Um, I really enjoy learning things. So going through and, and learning things like like Blender, I quite frankly don't want to do right now. Um, I would rather be working in different portions of this. Um, but I think it's important for me to know how this works in order to actually get further in my, in my goal here. Um, For me, the the project it helps keep me sane with all the all the stuff that's going on in my full time job. So it's it's nice to come to and enjoy programming. Um, because I, I I'm a programmer, right? If I retired today, I would program tomorrow. Right? That, it's just how I am. So for me, being a programmer is, isn't is just like a job, right? And when my day job kind of gets into that mode where it's like, uh, you know, you're not, you're not living to work, you're working to live, right? There's that, that line that you kind of flip back and forth between. You're like, oh, I can't stand this project. Okay, let's get through it. I, I really like some of the people I work with, um, so it's nice to to have that sort of community. I've worked with them in previous gigs as well. But gosh darn, that their coronavirus has turned everything up on its head. Yeah, that's that's me trying to do a southern accent. Um, you joined a startup. This is your first job. Okay, cool. You're learning and enjoying the process of learning and building stuff. But after joining, you don't get time to learn and work on your stuff. And you don't know something. And if you don't know something regarding a specific tech being used at your day job, you want to learn that specific tech. But is it cheating? If you learn during work hours for the specific tech. Um, 
Ooh, this is this is like one of those learning slash mentoring moments. Um, so one thing that startups love to do is take advantage of young engineers. Um, it's cool. It's dare I say hip, etc. Right to kind of um, get in and kind of work your butt off. Right, you're young. You're gonna make this thing awesome, and it has an incredibly awful work-life balance. Um, I I would definitely so. Whenever you have, uh, do you do you have uh, sprints, the Stone Cold Man? I would push to have, if you do have sprints and things like that, um, I, wh whatever it is that you use for planning, um, push basically what you want to learn into the planning to increase its visibility. It'll have a couple of effects. You'll, you will <laughs> appear responsible. Um, you will increase basically how people see like you're growing you're like okay look, wow this person's going in and they're trying to learn these extra things we need to know this there might be a lack of this or you, you might find that other people can mentor you in these areas that you want to learn okay so you're you've gone basically to more of a kanban setup and you know xp sprints whatever you want to call these things they're really just a whole bunch of, of uh, tools. You take the tool that works for your team. I don't think anybody should do just like straight up um, certain, like, um, you know, oh, you have to do XP, you have to do Kanban, you have to, like, it's not prescriptive. You take the pieces that work for you, right? And it's good that your team's doing that. Um, I would toss in there some Jiri issues or learning XYZ task, right? Time box it. Say, hey, I need a couple hours to learn this, right? And then also put some hard limits on work-life balance, especially if you're working from home, you really need that. Otherwise your life is work. You'll also find that um, if you have better sort of limits between work and life, um, when you do get into work and you your mind is fresh, you'll actually get a lot more done. You'll be more effective at actually coding and, and working out problems than if you're exhausted mentally. All right. You need to stay sharp. Exactly, Xenocron. You're essentially being asked to learn something. It is work. It is for their value that you know this. Be reasonable about it and don't try to like go through some 60 hour course or unless that's needed, right? That might actually be needed. It might be a week and a half of learning. So. Oh, no, no, please, derail away. I mean, we're, we're learning Blender. How far off the rail are we? <laughs> and if, if, you know, a gray beard can help some younger dev, I highly encourage you to take as much learnings as you can from, from whomever you can in these sorts of situations. You're not always going to be in a place where you have a good mentor. So, um, graybeard, <laughs> graybeard. I got I got the little white going on on my chin. And I don't know if you saw a toggle, but he's got like full on a uh, little salt in his sideburns there. He's got uh, some white coming in on the sideburns and.
All right. Yeah, and, and coming back to your original question on motivation, Zenkron, your statement there, sometimes you need to be your own mentor, is is kind of what this is here. I don't have a blunder mentor. Like, actually, uh, you guys have, have been really good at, at, at uh, helping out with blunder as well. Um, but sadly, I can't show the uh, the course I'm going through because Having been like a musician and other things, I if it's somebody's content I don't that I don't have rights to, I don't want to share it. No, oh, interesting. They're talking about how to do smaller rendering in viewports. So let's let's close this down here. Where was that? Oh, that's in the render. Where's the render border? It should be in here. Cycle supported sampling. Ooh, square samples? That seems neat. Let's see, you were the only full-time engineer working at the company, two front-end engineers, and one left last week. We hired one part-time senior dev who will go full-time, God, who knows who, who knows when. And you have two founders, one tech, one other business guy. You talked to the tech guy today. If you want, you can share a screenshot and chat. Give you more context for your problem. Yeah, if you want to share, I can try to guide you. Um, if, if you don't want to share in that form, you can also PM us or I don't know, Xenocron, I don't want to volunteer you, but. Shading. Right. Oh, that's bright. Oh, there we go.
So, the Stone Cold Man, how long have you been with the company? Okay, so I've gone through the message. That's quite a bit of text there. Um, yeah, about two months in? Yeah, uh, okay, so... I think the um, whomever you're actually interacting with in the text, there, you know, they that twenty percent of your time bit. Right, that's just kind of like a, a number they kind of pull out of the air, right? The, the guidance there is basically don't just spend your time learning, right? We do have to get, you know, we have to keep our eye on the ball, keep our eye on shipping, because. Well, eventually the company goes away if if money doesn't come in. So keep that in mind, right? The, the guidance is really just keep your eye on the ball. So learn what you need to in order to get the job done. And I'd say keeping it visible is keeping it accountable. So if you can maybe watch some of the videos and put it in, let's say, a, a wiki, a document on how to do certain things. Right? So that the next person that comes through can actually you know, not just read the code, but understand the architecture and how things work, etc. Yeah, and I would actually, you know, try to get it part of the uh, stories, right? Try to limit your time on it, um, and try to record some sort of output, right? Like, hey, this is so that I can X, Y, Z for you, right?
And if that whole sentence there doesn't make sense for the company, then you're probably not learning the right things for it. All right. You definitely want to tie everything back to the business, to delivering, to profitability, whatever it is. And in your mind, try to weigh it, right? Because you'll definitely get to points where it's like, hey, we don't need learning right now. We need to get this other thing done because client XYZ needs it tomorrow. All right, definitely weigh it. And if you can find that balance earlier in your career, then it'll it'll help you as you go on. Because, there, I mean, things in startups, they come in, in waves too. You'll find that you'll have like a crunch period, then kind of like a, hey, we shipped and things are like, you know, relax for a little bit. And then it's like, okay, we got to hit our next target. You know, I couldn't find a little piece that, that they were talking about in here. I thought it was in this piece of the menu where they were saying, um, Oh, you're very welcome, Stone Cold Man. Yeah, when you think about these things, also the Stone Cold Man, think about the visibility of it, right? You don't want to do these sorts of things in secret. Um, and think about the perception. It's okay to do things for yourself if they're also in line with the company and they'll benefit the company. Just be open to feedback. Don't take it personally. Founders, business people, whatever, they, they got other things that they have to worry about that they don't always share. Like some founders will be very, very open. Um, and some, some just aren't. So they might have other stresses, right? Funding, etc. What is this render pass? This is combined da, da, da. mission. Oh wow! So you can just do the emissive bits. That's crazy. They don't have just two background and okay. amity collision. Oh look at that! That is cool. So if I do control B, so that is there, but I don't know where the option for this is. That is so weird. Walk object mode window. Just Another day, another mutable, multiple mutable borrow struggle. Yes. That's when you decide, hey, Emperor, Emperor, that, you know, you're better off just being an artist. Kidding. That 
as you need. Look at that ambient occlusion on there. That is that is very handy. I just don't know. Hmm. I don't see anything toggling there. Path tracing. It's freestyle. <laughs> but then you notice that Blender has no versioning. I realize that programming isn't that bad after all. Ah, uh, yes. yes. <laughs> That's right. Fry the grass on the other side. Project 3B underscore final underscore final blend. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, that's right. Well, this is too bad. I have no idea where that where that option actually is in here. Oh, maybe it's over here in this menu. View. Ah, render region. There it is. Oh my goodness. I. I get confused sometimes because there's this menu that pops out of the right, and then there's this menu that pops down from the top. I don't always see the difference. Ah, there it is. All right, that makes sense. Now we know where that is. That could be very helpful later. I I don't know why I'm not going to be using this for rendering. <laughs> <laughs> this is the point where I realize, you know what, the thing I just looked 10 minutes for will never matter because Godot's going to be rendering and now Blender. Dun dun dun. Yeah. Feels so uncomfortable without Git. You know what? That's one one of the next pieces in here is going to be uh, version control. So I am curious to see. I've been trying to go through this. Last time you're here, I was writing overcomplicated network proxy architecture. That's correct. We were working on um, a multiplexing setup. done. Yeah, they're talking about the difference between Alt and B and Control and B. So if we do Control B, do that. One thing, if we do Alt and B, 
it's something else. Does it only show up in cycles? Alt B. Didn't do anything. You say overcomplicated, but everything in Rust is overcomplicated, yes. Uh, you tried doing some Rust networking during this time. Oh, cool. You give up after fighting to share a database manager instance across async client handler contacts. All. Oh. We're using a uh, DB pool, like a, um, we're using a pool for the uh, database connection instances. That, that's typically how I would handle that. Have a number of connections that are to the database. Uh, and there's a number of, of crates out there that work really, really well for that. Oh, I see. Oh, using async. Oh, I see. So it wasn't a pull. You figured you could just do it. You could do it synchronously and have the clients wait for lock. But didn't like it anyway, and it and you were just confused by that. I see. Were you using mutexes with async? Because there's there's some gotchas in there. If you're using mutexes with async, you you could actually um, lock up the thread. If you're not using, I guess what I would call async mut mutexes. So depending on how you were doing this, it it could have gone really bad real quick. Oh wow, okay, um, new file, don't save. Okay, back here, I'm gonna delete that. I'm gonna generate geometry using curves. Mesh, circle. Let's go to curve, just say Bezier. I see, and if we come in here, Was this it? Ah, here. Under object data properties, okay. Geometry data. Oh, that's different. No, I have the wrong thing selected. I should have the Curve selected. Geometry. Bevel. Object. And we can select the circle.
Oh, they're both curves in the other, the other system. But why does this one... This circle's a little different. Maybe I wasn't meant to create geometry there. Curve, circle, there we go. That's what we wanted. Bevel, object. Is he a curve? Oh, look at that. I want to see the mesh data for that. Wow. So basically just took that curve and extruded it kind of along that path. Wow. Well, the server state struct references were just passed onto all the client handlers. And the client handlers were in an async context because Tokyo and Kodak and stuff, yep. There was no async stuff on the DB side to which there was a reference in the server struct, I see. Yeah, in your case, you probably needed to um, gotta go into here. Oh wow, what's going on there? <laughs> Cargo burr. Yes. Um, Acing me attacks. It's fun. The one that you could use because you could you could wrap your DB handle in a read write lock just so that. Um, you could await the handle, it, or just a, a, a mutex. Actually, a mutex is probably what you want because you cannot read twice from that. Never mind. You want the mutex here. Um, but this is different from a normal mutex, and that it will not uh, block the thread. If you use a mutex out of standard, like standard sync mutex, you're going to end up blocking the thread. So you have to use something that doesn't actually use mutexes behind the scene, um, but acts and behaves as a mutex would. So if we go to the documentation on this one, look at mutex. Let's see, do they have implementation details? Go take a peek. Is the data lock operations? This is the event. Okay. So it just defer, uh, defers the actual lock until it's available, and the async ex executor can do its thing. Meanwhile, yes, exactly. Exactly. If you use standard lock or a standard mutex, it's going to lock the thread. Yeah, blocks threads waiting for the lock to become available, which means that whatever the thread is that your runtime needs just got locked. So you have to be careful using these mutexes inside of async mutexes, or excuse me, inside of async runtimes. You can use them if you absolutely need to, like sometimes it might actually make sense. I say that, but I can't think of a reason. Um, so. Let's see, let's, let's change this. So if I do that, Oh, the geometry didn't change. I thought that it would update. Do we have to choose that again? Circle. Busy curve. Oh, it did not update.
And if you're looking for other sorts of tools to use with async, uh, Steven here has a number of crates for async bits that I end up using all the time. I, I would I would highly recommend them. Um, actually, I haven't seen his stuff in a while. I want to go back and look at the, the changelog versions. Because this is version 1.4, and the documentation is 2.3. What's with that? Let's go to GitHub on this one, I'm curious. Sixteen tags. Yeah, version two dot three. Strange. Change log. Merge all subcrates. function for the constructors. Added barrier and semaphore. Look at that. What? It didn't do that for me. Let's try this. is changing. But why is it that when I change this, oh, it was updating. I just didn't see it. What's our Bayesian curve? Oh, I'm still in edit mode. Let's move that up. 
Oh, I see. Okay, so we flatten that out. Rotate it on the X90. So now we can kind of see the curve and what we're doing there. Move that. Let's see, move that over just a touch. So if I go back into edit mode. Right click, we can subdivide. It gives us another point. And then on this point, and right click, where is it? Control points. Oh, set handle type. There it is. It's the V. So we select that, hit V. Let's say vector, as opposed to automatic to make a straight line V here. Vector. And we can move that G, bring that, whoa, and its buddies over here. That there. We bring this in a little bit. GX, pull that in, like so. All right, now this here, can go ahead and move that. We have a little curve. Okay, it's probably a little much, but it's got a little, hmm. into let's see perspective mode. Ooh, that's that's fancy. Let's set its origin point. Okay, looks like we need to rotate that. Can we just rotate it here? We're gonna try rotating it in object mode. There's so much that you get into when you're just trying to use Blender, and that makes you so much better at Blender. I had the kids going through some of these tutorials and they weren't actually doing the exercises that go along with it. That makes such a big difference. Okay, so we're going to rotate that on X90. See, that didn't make a change here. Is that because the, the vertices? Because it's, that's kind of there. Still doesn't feel right. In fact, it looks wrong. 
Alright, let's take this GZ and that in closer. Oh, there we go. Now it's more of like a taco bowl sort of thing. Oh, not bad. If we ever need to have like a little chips and dips sort of bowl. Alright, but we're going for like lamp base. don't know what happened there. Oh, that's a zoom. Uh, G... No. Rotate on Z 90. Negative 90. Wow. Yeah, definitely some magic there. That is sweet. I feel like, uh, like a potter rotating, like it's like a pottery wheel. This feels like it would really, it would look really neat as part of a rendered animation. That, that would be cool. Like if you just animate that and it would just change the shape of, hmm. That could be, that could, you could end up with really cool animations that way. I think I'm getting closer to the sort of base that I want. I think we need to rotate this by... What? Why, why did that change? see oh my goodness okay let's keep going <laughs> seems like a very power powerful tool I feel like I'm like having pointer errors and see getting all sorts of really neat behaviors but not understanding what's going on Try the challenge again. Okay, get out of there. Well, let's just do a new scene. General, don't say. Delete that. Delete. Okay. I'm gonna do a curve, a circle, line base. Is here. So let's do this again. Curve, geometry, taper, lamp base. Oh wait, 
selected. Do I have the wrong thing selected? It's a lab base. This is the curve. Oh, I was doing the wrong thing. Should have been down here in Bevel. Lamp phase. Yeah, let's make sure that... The <laughs> oh no, I did the wrong one. Okay, this one's clean. Let's go back to lamp phase. Bevel. Choose this. Profile. back this way. Move that to one. We'll have that curve starting in the center. Select everything. Rotate on X ninety. <laughs> oh, I had the other elements still checked. Okay. Oh, it's right. Okay, let, let's go back. My base profile. Select everything. Rotate negative 90. Not that way. On Z. Oh, I meant X. Rotate X 90. Kind of? Oh. Flipped over. to the X say dot one so that's off origin just a touch but it looks like it's going the wrong way it's going into itself Now where's our lamp base? Let's go back here, turn this off. Yeah, 
that's going from origin. It's pretty good. That's better. <laughs> it looks like a donut. <laughs> All right. Converting a curve object to a mesh mesh object should be pretty quick. Um, what is this? One eighteen. Let's improve this just a touch. What's going on? Why can't I select? Oh, there we go. And yeah, profile. I would like to move that whole thing. Let's say a GX. Let's say three that way. See, that's of our base. Oh, is it? Oh, I see. Kind of got it curved in two axes. Which one is it using? It's using that one? Is it using this one? Looks like it's using this one. So if we scale Z that way, okay, everything's still good. Ah, there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and subdivide this. Segment subdivide. select these two and right click no no V Take those vectors oh I got the it's on the wrong side Flip that around, rotate it around its y axis. Let's 
still looks kind of donut-esque, but a little better. Oops. Take this point here. It just kind of goes up. It's fine. We select this point and this point and subdivide again. No, not scale. Yeah, we'll leave it. All right. Now they were talking about reducing the number of polys that we use in this. It's over here. What is this? Oh, that's the light in the scene. Line base. We select the whole thing. Drop that down quite a bit. I'm back on. There, now it's pretty bad. Go back to the lamp base and look at the geometry. Vertices, okay. Okay, I don't know what those do. Zero. Extrude taper object. Oh, there, there we go. So if we reduce this, have as much as we can, we end up with many fewer elements in there. If we look at that, yes, true. Now, if we also add a modifier, subdivide surface, makes it smooth again. I'm wondering why why people go through do it this way. Is it so that they can basically bake the normals at a much higher resolution then drop it back down for the lower one and then apply those normals? That looks really, really smooth. It's got has some triangles in it, but yeah, it looks much, much smoother. Wow, okay. So they went through and showed us how to do that. So in this case, we're going to right click. The option that they're trying to teach next isn't there.
All right, so this just isn't there. Oh, convert to mesh. There it is. What did I click on? Wait, why did that work that time? All right, so we can convert to mesh. We can also say keep the original. Okay, fine. Which one's the original? This one. This mesh. Why is it not showing more? Oh, I guess it is now. Now with this, we can come through, clean up a bunch of these edges in here, reduce the poly count on this. Yeah, do that and then maybe uh, one too many. This is all vertices. Uh oh. Well, that's odd. Why would it keep that one? So we just do one. One ring. That is odd. Is it the normals? Whoa. Wow. back in there. Edge loop. Should be able to just dissolve. Dissolve vertices. And it goes away. But it doesn't. Now, alternatively, we could just select the rings at the bottom and then pull one down. That seems like it's not exactly what we want to do. We should be able to select those just as if we were selecting these. So if we did that and dissolve vertices, it goes really, really wrong. It's very poorly. So, let's see, what else can we do? We could Okay, select some of these edge loops. Or not this one. Say that one, that one. Uh, scale Z, zero. Drop them all to the same place, F3. Merge by distance. Pull that back down. Set that to zero. So that should be better. Now this one here. Oh, that one worked. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think that one was adding much. Okay. That's interesting.
Oh, it did a terrible job merging those. Wow. Wow. Why would it do that? by distance. Let's select the names. Seems like there's two sets there. I'm not sure how to fill the bottom in on this. It's like something something is fundamentally wrong with this some somewhere. I, I could go around, select let let's say this edge and that edge and hit fill. And it would do it. Seems wrong though. Might be okay.
That's weird, why? Why do I have just those two? Feels like these here, there's a little bit more geometry there that I don't know about. good this one's good uh, but this one also Since there's only two there, it's fine.
glad I looked at the clock. I've got a meeting in five minutes. <laughs> grumble, grumble. Actually, I'm, I like this meeting. Morning. John DeSant Donato. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing well. Doing well. Oh yeah. Yeah, Blender did change. It's gotten better. It's gotten a lot better. All right. I think I've, I've butchered some stuff in here. Like it's weird that, um, that this section here exists. I'm guessing, yeah, that went all the way through. And then if I select this loop and that loop and say, hey, fill this, it doesn't do it right. But if we did uh, bridge, edge loops, ooh, it does it correctly. Oh, nice. Very nice. Now let's do the same thing for the inside. One, two. Nice, okay. That's okay. And if we wanted to create the stem for this, take this. Probably want to fill. Yep. Extrude up. We have our base for our, our lamp. That's not too bad. I said I can still see the vertices. You? Hmm. Oh, am I in? Yeah, there we go. It's in edit mode. It's not bad. It's a little weird at the top. Oh, that's that's just like uh, EV, isn't it? Under cycles, yeah. Okay. And <laughs> they reworked it to make it more friendly to newcomers. I don't know, I, I'm a newcomer and I still can't find everything. All right, but I gotta get going. So we're gonna do a quick raid. You guys have any suggestions?
Let's see anybody doing blunder? We should probably raid somebody with blunder today. Blunder, game dev, something. Ooh. What is this one? sit here and connect to a meeting so till next time bye y'all